kind of derelict. Man, I haven't seen that in a while. I know, unfortunately I see it every day. So does my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you a popular guy <laughs> no. around the house, right? My Jeep here is a Scrambler, which is a CJ8. It's a 104 inch wheelbase version of the CJ7. I've started building it, I don't know, in the late 90s or something like that. And it went through a, a bunch of different shops as well as myself doing things to it. It's got Dana 60s in both ends with 717 axle gears and air lockers. The engine is just like a stock, gutless GM Goodwrench 350, but it's got an NV4500 five-speed manual transmission, Atlas transfer case, and the whole under the side of the frame has been fabricated to accommodate that stuff with the transfer case rotated and tucked up into the floorboard in a fabricated floor so that the whole underside of the frame is flat for ground clearance. It, it's semi-functional right now, but it just needs a lot of tinkering. Like, the front leaf springs are flat. Look how it's sitting right on the bump stop, like literally on oh, the bump stop. Man. So it needs springs and I don't think I've changed the oil literally since we built the thing. Dude, you've had this thing like 15 years. I know. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I literally don't think I've ever changed the oil. Oh yeah. And uh, I know this is absurd. I actually would like to paint it. <laughs> I know. You know. Are you just saying that just for me or what? No, I don't want to paint it nice. I want to fog the thing army green again just so it looks less chalky. I mean, look at that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, a grayish pink. So I think we need to get it running, air up the tires, then just throw it out of the trailer, get it up to your place, change the leaf springs on it, and I've got some other tinkering I need to do and then squirt it. Yeah. I'll do the painting, you do the taping. You know what, Dolchek? What? I read comments sometimes of people questioning my masculinity when I wear sandals on camera. Now I think I know what they're talking about. Really? I never got it until right now. Well, you notice my feet are all pink because they've never seen the daylight until now. <laughs> it's creeping me out. I know. Here. It's even creeping me out and my own feet. We're doing the absolute wrong thing, half-heartedly half painting a truck in our driveway, but we're doing it the right way, which is to make sure we get all of like the surface contaminants off the thing, that there's no oxidation on it, because we're not gonna prime it at all. We're just gonna blast paint over it. And so with the pressure washer, I chipped off all the loose paint that I practically could, and now we're about to scrub the thing down with red scotch, bright, and some detergent to get the grease off the surface, if there is any. I'm gonna walk over here and scrub. And then I just follow behind you and hose it off before it dries. <laughs> and you need to wear the girly shoes for that job? <laughs> uh, I think this is the last thing we're gonna do before rolling it inside and wrenching on it while it's drying. Steve. <laughs> the Jeep has a spring over axle suspension system. When it was stock, the leaf spring went underneath the rear axle like this. And then by putting it on top of the rear axle, you gain a bunch of lift and flexibility because you can use a flatter spring instead of a heavily arched spring. The problem is that the distance between my bump stop to the frame when it's on the ground or when it's flexed out is nothing. And so to gain some up travel, I need to put more spring in it. See, this is how these springs fool you. They look like they have a ton of arc in them. Then next thing you know, they sag out and hardly even work on your Jeep. Okay. Same spring center to center, but you can see this one's taller. Wow, this is gonna lift this thing a lot. Now. All right, let her down. Let's see what we accomplished, if anything. There we go. Put all the weight on it. Look how much that spring's flattening out. Wow, look at that. The distance between the leaf spring and the bottom of the frame is about the thickness of my finger. That means any bump, as the spring gets longer, it's gonna hit the frame, basically. Let's flex it out. What do you mean? Drop the fork and, and park the tire on the fork, and I'll be in it with my foot on the brake, and then lift it, and let's see how high it'll go before it'll lift another tire. Before I flip it over? Yeah. <laughs> All 
Oh yeah, it's taller. I don't know if it's gonna pick up this left rear or the right front first. I'm losing my nerve. Holy cow, man, that is a lot. Wow, this is actually better than I thought it was gonna be. That's it, it lifted the tire. That was a lot of monkey motion today for not a lot of progress, but I feel happy. Look at my Jeep. It's like way better than expected. And the whole painting it thing, I'm seriously questioning that now. I don't know, it's looking pretty good to me. I wanna tinker more and then go up four-wheeling. This is good. You were hoping we'd forget, right? Nope, it's the Roadkill Garage zip tie moment. Check this out. When you're dealing with your 4x4 with a high travel suspension, sometimes you wanna know how much your suspension travels, sometimes you wanna make sure that your shock doesn't top all the way out under compression because then it can break off shock mounts and do bad things and stuff like that. So what you wanna do is take your zip tie, put it around your shock absorber shaft. You want it pretty tight on there because it's gonna move freely. Put it all the way down right there and then you're gonna hit the road and go four-wheeling over your favorite obstacle. When you come back, this is going to have been pushed up by the shock body, tell you exactly how much travel that you've got there. And if this is crammed all the way up into there, you know you have a problem. So there you have it, the ingenious Roadkill Garage zip tie moment. So I like just exploring like this, but we need obstacles. Did you bring your balls with you? Oh yeah, I always pack them. <laughs> all right. So that's the end of the trail, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is the start of the trail. Dude, you, you're freaking delirious if you think you're gonna get that thing up here. That's not the obstacle. Done those many times. This is the one that gets me. See all this? Let's see, the taillight lens, U-bolt strap. This is a hiking trail, man. You have to hug your tire. See the tire mark on those? Yeah. You have to hug it up there while also hugging that rock. And then when you get on that one, you have to steer into it. And the thing is, if you slip, you fall down in here and just wedge yourself and it's all over. Do you need me to spot? No, I'm genuinely intimidated by this. And you're gonna be on your rock slider. High centered. Wow. Is it climbing it? Don't let yeah. it go under the Jeep. No, it's climbed it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and now we're at the scary part. I think I'm gonna hold on to my seat for this one. You're a little off the peak as you progress. You're gonna start rolling over it here pretty soon. I just need to look since there's no spotter. Go on, Fry Burger. Ah! That's uh, what I didn't want to have happen. Uh, <laughs> Why didn't you tell me turn left? I thought you had it. Oh, now that's real bad. Okay, there went my quarter panel. Don't kill yourself, dude. <laughs> my scrambler had been sitting for four or five years. We totally got the thing going yesterday. Did a lot of little tiny details. Mike Cotton was a complete boss making the fuel system happen. Oh, you did everything else though. But it was a good day. And now is the time we actually have to leave the house and hope that we can drive, I don't know, 700 miles or something to Moab, Utah to four wheel this, this thing. This is gonna be awesome. Yeah, and this is gonna be his first experience in the Jeep. It's gonna be my first four-wheel drive, Moab, everything. Oh, okay. This thing's too high, first of all. Yeah, no, it's perfect. Will it run this morning? Don't say that, yes. Did you pull your choke? I did. What's going on? Do that again. You got no fuel. There we go. There go. Man. Oh, I know. See it smoking? What's that mean? The choke is too much. Oh, well. It's, it's stuck? Oh, hell. And we're off. What? It's 
So what's the speed we gonna travel at? Four? 65 or 70. This thing will be all over the road at 65 or 70. Maybe. <laughs> actually is most impressing me right now is that uh, the tires feel round. Sitting for like four years like that? Well, maybe we're sitting so high that we're not supposed to feel the... Look at the vital signs. This thing's great. What's it running at, 155 degrees? Yeah, it looks it. About a little less than 160. Your oil pressure is about four or about 50. Yep. Look at that. Gauges work. Things are lubed up. We got the gears going. Man, we gonna make it all the way. Yeah, you need to put a motor in here. It's got some power. Yeah, the motor is gutless. I will tell you now, this thing is remarkably awful in sand dunes. It weighs way too much and doesn't have enough power, and the gears in low range are so low that you can't get enough wheel, wheel speed. speed. So it's like the worst combination of terrible. Does more horsepower help in rock calling? There's two styles. What a lot of guys do these days, they have an automatic, and they'll set themselves up on an obstacle and goose it, and bop, 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 and get up. It works. I'm really old school. I like the stick, I like the low gears. I want to drive elegant. I want to come up to an obstacle and just chug up it at about 300 RPM. So it really doesn't mean about the horsepower then? Not a bit. It's all about the gears and torque. <laughs> I can't wait to see what this, I ain't scared of nothing. I'm not scared, I, I, yeah, I am. <laughs> We're about 200-ish miles from home and we pulled over here because look at that traffic jam. The 15 freeway is stopped. As soon as we pulled over here, the Jeep wouldn't crank again, like the battery was dead. And we've also been having a problem where it just, it idles terrible. Man, this thing used to fire up instantly. Something has changed. Filter's clear, so we know it's not that issue or that filter. We'll just change these plugs. So we've checked the filters. Now we're gonna go straight into changing and checking a plug. That ain't bad. That ain't bad, dude. No, that's great. I am gonna look for vacuum leaks by spraying the carb cleaner all around the base to see if we can hear the tone of the engine change once it's sucking in the carb cleaner and, you know, combusting it. And then when that doesn't work, I'm gonna do the old man trick of the rev and suck. What I'm gonna do is pick up the RPM and then I'm gonna clog the primary here with my hand. That increases the air speed through all the little passages in there and sometimes like clears up an idle circuit and makes it run right. It's starting to rain, that's perfect. Hey, do your super suck. Oh, I'm gonna do the super suck. Do your super I suck. I promise the super suck, I'm doing the super suck. This can either be good or it can super suck. Okay. Get it. Rev it up. So you just choked it, and you think that everything just came through and went through. I call the win. Well, his sucking job that he did, I guess, worked. I don't know. It revved up a little bit more. Admit it. Then we get back on the road. It was about 40 minutes in here, big, long, dusty road, and we're the only Jeep with no top, and so we're all covered with dust and everything, which Cotton has never experienced. Everyone's airing their tires down. You just do that for a better ride quality and uh, more traction. Dave told me that these trepidors tend to pop the inside bead because the sidewall's so stiff, but it's got a bead lock on the outside. So I wanted to go to five pounds. He was like, you probably shouldn't do that. So I'm going to nine. This whole area is called the White Wash Sand Dunes. We're gonna drive through this wash, which is gonna be easy and a lot of fun and sandy, and then we're gonna get into some rocks. Have you never driven on a sand dune before? No, we really? don't have them. We don't have sand dunes. Wow. So like, this, this is, is awesome. This is like crazy feeling to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> pretty pissed about me. That's cool. <laughs> I'm glad you're digging it. Dude, I love it. We've been blasting around the dunes. I feel pretty good I was able to follow Chappelle in two-wheel drive. I thought this was going to be way worse than that. I'm still in high range, too. Next up, we got a big puddle to go through. We have just got out to this really cool, like, hidden sand dune section in Moab, and now apparently they've had just torrential downpour because we're about to do some water crossing that's probably 40 inches deep. It's going to be red. So we'll see. We might get water in the rig. We might not. I got a camera guy with me. No, we're fine. That, that Cherokee's making it through. Here we go. It up. That's it for this Jeep. Yep, that was it. All We're right. taking on. Dude, this is a lot of water. <laughs> Look at him, he stuck it. Hope not. I hydro locked it. The Jeep's done. No way. Oh. We're going to have to uh, tow this thing out pretty quick. It's taking on a lot of water. OK. So Chappelle went in before us, and it stalled. It had to have and hydro locked it. So that means that the water is inside of it. So they don't want to kill it any worse. We're going to pull it out. And now we in this water, and we splitting water all over us. Yeah, the fan is in. This is what roadkill is like. I'll pull up. <laughs> Didn't you make a comment about I always break stuff? <laughs> He's basically done for today. Yeah. See, we drove seven hours just to help him out. I think I just roached the motor in this thing. Cotton to the rescue. Look at the water pouring out of the underside of Dan's Jeep. This is insane. Okay. We start to roll. Do not grab this. Don't, don't you grow up like or this? Or this. I got that, but why did you real talk me? <laughs> just anything can happen anywhere. OK. That's awesome, dude. OK, but what if we go down in here? What do you mean, go down in there? We don't uh -oh. even. Uh-oh. I slipped off the line. Hey, man, man. What, what do I do? Uh -uh. What do I do? I hope you don't be playing. What do I do, Cotton? Uh, Freiburg, let it chug. <laughs> let it chug. Oh, hell. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> How was that? That was not nice. <laughs> There is not a path here. You're going up all that? Yeah. Man. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, it's not. <laughs> is that rock the problem? Uh, no, you can go back like 10 feet pretty easily. The problem is my right rear is about to slide yeah. off this thing. There we go. How's uh, it look? Things working like a champ. Yep. Got a little papa wheelie going on? Yep. How am I looking? You're good. Ah, the tires are killing it. You like the lug? 300 RPM. It's pretty good. I love it. I'm not even touching the steering wheel. Right. Literally not touching the Jeep. Ah, uh, what a cool Jeep. I'm a, I'm a wheeler. That's what he is. Look at that chugga. Oh, boy. Have you ever flipped it backwards? No. It's so fun. I wish I could go four wheeling. Cotton, this is nothing like wheeling in the south. Really? This is almost nothing like wheeling. 